Today we're going to continue with Unit 7. So, last time you learned about independent and dependent variables, and you learned about conditional functions. You learned how to use the cond keyword to program conditional functions in Racket. Today we'll learn about algebra um, notation and how we talk about the same kind of ideas in algebra for conditional functions, and you'll learn how to use conditional functions to move your game player. So let's do a, a practice exercise to start with. Um, turn to page 37 in your um, uh, workbook. And actually, let me open it up and make sure that's the right page. There's Luigi's. Page 37. So turn to page 37. It's a red shape. All right. So we're going to do a function called red shape. Its domain is going to be a string, and its range is an image. Actually, let's see. Does it tell us the problem statement in here? Yeah. Write a function called red shape, which takes the name of the shape, like a circle, triangle, star, or rectangle, and produces a solid red version of that shape. Use 50 as the radius of the circle and star and as the side length of the triangle. Make the rectangle 99 long by 9 wide. All right, so that's going to take a string, right, and it's going to take in one of these things, circle, triangle, star, rectangle and it's going to produce an image. So if you remember, when we have like circle, it takes several different uh, inputs um, to produce and produces an image. This one, we're just going to take one input to produce an image, and then we'll use our conditional function to fill in the rest of the things that we need. So for an example, red shape of circle should produce the same thing as circle 50 solid red. Red shape triangle should produce the same thing as triangle 50 solid red. Red shape star and red shape rectangle. So go on in your um, example and fill that in. All right, so how are we going to define that? Um, just like the conditionals we've been working with, we can see that um, there are some of these things are dependent on the uh, word that goes in. So there's it's conditional because different inputs in the range, I'm sorry, different inputs in the domain use different variables to produce the, the output in the range. So we're going to define red shape, um, and it's going to have a variable of shape. Right, so we look at these guys right here, all the, these parts of the input, they're changing every time, and shape seems like a good thing to call that. And, um, so let's go back there here. All right, what's it going to produce? Well, in our examples, just like before, our examples really determine the body of our function. So we can look in these examples and say, oh, well, for the, for the circle input, we're going to produce a circle that's 50 solid red. And so on down these inputs. So remember how we check to see if the variable shape matches one of the strings, right? Because our domain is string. So it matches one of these string outputs. And so one thing they didn't do was an else. So um, we'll have to see what happens if we put something other than this in. So use the design recipe for the red shape to complete um, that you completed on page 37 to write a red shape function. And I'll do that here in our Dr. Racket. So red shape. And our domain is a string. And our range is an image. And let's see, let's write our purpose statement. Um, produce 
be given shape um anything else I want to put for that um let's say produce the shape given by the input string okay and let's say we want an example and we know how to do a circle for a circle we're going to do a circle 50 solid Oops. Oh, that's why my example wasn't the right color because it's sort of filled wrong. All right. Actually, I'm going to copy this three times, or copy it once and then paste it. Two, three, four. And we also know how to draw a. I'm going to go back and look. Triangle, star, rectangle. Triangle, star. rectangle and we know that they're all going to be solid red but some of these other things are going to change let's say well, these have to match triangle and star and rectangle spelled that wrong over here all right and they did different here I think our instructions let's see instructions here say make the rectangle 99 long and 9 wide so let's we can do that in our version 99 long 9 wide all right define red red shape we know it takes in a shape and it's going to produce an image. Let's see. So it's going to produce an image. All right, so we know that we want to use our cond, C O, let's see, open, C O N D. And then we know that cond uses these guys and we're going to have four of those it's one two let's see that's one two three four All right so we got four cons and we know that each con is going to have two parts right it's going to have a test and an output and we know that output has to be an image right test and an image and for our image we our examples gave us exactly what we need so we know that this first one is going to have a test and a circle image and we'll know our second one is going to have a test and a triangle image And we know our third one is going to have a test. So we'll fill in the test in a minute. And a star image. And our last one is going to have a test. A rectangle image. All right, so this produces images. That's good. We'll make this one the last one for now. So I'm going to back that up so it looks right. Close the con, close the define, good. All right, so what do these tests look like? Well, our, our domain is string, so we want to test to see if it's a string. So we want to say string equal, huh? Right, and our um, variable is called shape. So we're testing our shape variable against some specific things that we know. In this line, we know that we want to do, in order to produce this circle output, we only want to do that if our shape is 
circle. So if we get the, 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 the string circle in for shape, that's what this is going to test, then we're going to make a solid red circle. And that's exactly what we're supposed to do. So I think we can copy this inside part of the test, kind of make a template for the tests. Right now this needs to change, triangle and star and rectangle. Now, so let's double check. We have strings for the input, that's shape. We're testing the shapes and producing images for the output. Um, we want to make sure that we have at least one test for each branch of our conditional, and we do. Every one of the conditions matches a test, so that's a pretty good test to start with. So let's run that and see if we have any test failures. The test failures aren't bad. There's just something to fix. Just tell us what to do. Right, we had, uh, let's see, in the chamber, it's not defined yet. Right, it's above the definition. Yes. Let's go ahead and put the examples below. See if it's happier about that. Okay. Um, didn't complain about that. So that's good. So, so our test passed. Um, so let's see it for ourselves. Let's do um, red shape circle. There's a circle. Cool. So that that was all. Um, so our test passed, and that's how it works. Uh, let's see what happens if we put in something else. Okay, so it's not technically an error, right? But it's letting us know, hey, um, you didn't have any, no, no shapes passed. Uh, you, nothing here. Now, we could do a couple of things. We could change, um, we could just return false and, you know, say else false. And we could change our, our range to be image or false. Um, we could also we could always do a uh, you know some kind of default image they call it. So if they if somebody says diamond and we don't know what a diamond is, we could just always make a circle. Um, so for right now, let's leave it. Um, but there are a couple of different ways you can handle the else part of this. And and fortunately, Dr. Rocket tells us, hey, you you didn't pass any and you didn't have an else. So that's good. So go ahead and transfer your uh, version over to your Unit 7 um, Racket file. So if you haven't opened your Unit 7 Racket file, go ahead and open your Unit 7 Racket file. And um, go ahead and based on your um, design recipe that you wrote on page 37, go ahead and uh, type that into Dr. Racket and test it yourself. And then also... Um, in the blank design recipe pages near the end of the workbook, create a design recipe for a function called green shape that produces a green colored shape that is always in outline format. So it's similar to the one you just did um, in the design recipe, except this one's going to have outline format instead of solid, and it's going to have green instead of red. Go ahead and make a design recipe, including four examples for that. And... Um, uh, and then when you're done with that, type that into your Unit 7 Racket um, document uh, file and uh, test that. All right, so pause right now and do that. All right, great. Get back to where we're supposed to be. So functions that use conditions are called piecewise functions. Each condition separate defines a separate piece of the function, so that's why it uses the term piecewise. Why are piecewise functions useful? Think about the player in your game. You'd like to move the player one way if you hit up and another way if you hit down. So moving up and down need two different expressions. So that's just like we saw with our conditional function. We do something different. So what we do is dependent 
on what key we hit. So let's look at an example of player movement. So here's the P player. What's his starting X coordinate? So remember, here's 640 by 480. X goes along the bottom, or along the, to left and right. So um, we go from 0, 0, we go to the right, 200. So his starting X coordinate is 200. What's the starting Y coordinate? So it looks like this is going to represent the, the uh, starting position. So starting Y is going to be 220. So starting X coordinate is 200. Starting Y coordinate is 220. All right, after the player moves, starting uh, the, the final X coordinate, they just moved up. So right, they didn't change their X at all. So it's 200. And then they added 20. So they went from 220 to 240 um, after the move. So the new X and Y coordinates are 200 and 240. So we can look at these other guys and say what has changed and by how much. So it looks like D went from 550 to, let's say it went from 550 100. I don't like where these are drawn. They're not drawn in the right place. Um, but um, when we press the down key, so think, let's say, for, so left and right changed our x coordinates. Up and down changed our, we'll change our y coordinates. So when we press the down key, we're going to take away from the y. Um, and when we press our up arrow, we're going to add to the y. What happens if we press other than up or down arrow? Well, if we press left, it's going to take away from x. If we press right, it's going to add to x. So we can make a chart of um, what happened, what we want to happen. Um, just like we made a chart with circle, uh, you know, the different shapes, we can make a chart with what we want to happen with different um, keys. So when the player presses up, we want to add 20 to, to, to the Y coordinate of the player. When they press down, we want to subtract from the Y coordinate of the player. And anything else they do, so let's, let's do, remember, you know, player is just going to move up and down. If you remember Ninja Cat, the background moves and other things move, but the, the, the Ninja Cat, just the player is just going to move up and down, right? So we're only changing the Y coordinate. So um, anything else, is we're not going to worry about that y doesn't change the the player doesn't change if you press any other key so let's go to um now that we know about conditional branching let's look at the update player function in our um game file so um we've been using let's see I'm going to open Um, I'm going to open game instead of Ninja Cat. On, on yours, we need to, to make sure that we're, we got everything set up in, in the right file. I think we need to start using game. Um, so we need to change your images to game and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to run this, see what position, what condition it's in. All right, so those guys are moving back and forth. My rocket doesn't move. I'm pressing all my buttons, and my rocket doesn't move. All right, that's fine. Now we want to find update player. Search for it. All right, there's update player. And so right now, um, all it's doing, um, actually, when, when I, if I press a key, um, it's just giving back the same the same thing. Um, so we know so it, it, we want to take in a, a number and a string and return a number. So it's given our y coordinate and a key. Um, we want to, so, so it, it says it, we want to use the chart that we saw over here. Let's look back at our chart. All right. Up, we want to add 20. 
down we want to subtract 20. Well, we know how to handle different things. Um, so this the, the, the range is a number, so that's why this is returning a number. So let's go ahead and put our cons in here. And we know we don't want to return y. We're going to return something different for each part of our cond. So let's put in cond. And we know that for each part of our cond, we want that and that. We only have two. Well, let's see. Let's do an else. So we know that. All right. So we've got three parts to our cond. And we know that every cond is going to have. Um, actually, we, you know what we didn't do is examples. And they've been told us here. Do an example, one for up, one for down, and one for the same. So let's do that. I don't make, I get, eventually would have done it in the design recipe because, you know, it's easy when you have the example to, to know what to put in the different conditions. So let's do our example. All right, update, player, y, key. All right. And... What do we want to happen? All right, so they said what we want is um, one for up. So let's say up. And let's say his Y is at um, 200. That's about in the middle. So if, if I'm at 200 and I press up, then what's going to come out? What's going to come out is I want to add 20, because that was in my chart, add 20 to 200. So I want to say plus 200. Let's do 20 first, 20 to 200. Okay? Because that's good. So my range is a number. And... Um, this is a number, 220. All right, that's cool. All right, I'm going to copy that line so I don't have to type it again. And All right, the next one for down. All right, what happens if I start with 200? I go down. Down means minus. And this, the chart, for some reason, we didn't put in the chart, but we want to subtract 20. So... Ah, and that's a good reason to have it the other way around. Let's swap these guys. That'll just make them look the same. It's always good to have consistency and the way things look because it makes it easier to see what's going on. So now it's clear that we're adding 20 to, to our y-coordinate. Now we're subtracting 20 from our y-coordinate. And anything else, well, anything else... So let's just put um, just the letter G or whatever. It doesn't matter. Any, anything else. We want to stay the same. So we don't need a calculation. And they gave us a hint in the way they originally did it. We just want to return 200. It stays the same. All right. So, so no matter anything other than up or down, it stays the same. Now we can go and do our conditionals. So we know we're going to have a test. And we can... Let's see, we'll start with this. But, all right, so we don't, we don't output the key. The Y is a number, so we're going to use that in our, in our test. And what was the Y here? Um, so the key changed. Y was going to be this, this number here, the 200 in our example. So Y, we're going to add 20 to Y. All right. So that's going to, then we know that. And so, all right, so let's go ahead and put in that test. What's the test going to be? Well, we have a string and a number coming in. We don't care about the number for the test, right? We didn't test anything. We didn't change anything for this 200. We, we just left it the way it was. We didn't make any decisions. But we do need to check the string. So string equal, huh? Um, and that was called, the variable is called key. 
and we want to check it against up. All right, so now we have a number and a string coming in, and that's going to be called the Y and a key. We want to test the key to see if it's up. If it is, then we add 20 to Y. I think that looks good. All right, now we need to make our down part. If the key is down, then we want to subtract 20 from Y. And then all we need to do for this one is, oops, I've got missing brackets. There. All right, now we can just say else. And what do we want to do? If it's else, we get to return a number. That number is our Y coordinate, so we just put in else Y. I don't think we even need to put any parentheses around it. All right, let's get these guys on the correct line. There's the end of the conditional. There's the end of the define. All right, let's run that, see if we get any errors, and if we can move um, our rocket up and down with our arrow key. All right, no error. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and quit it to make sure we don't have any errors. All right, good, no errors. I'll run again. All right, now I'm going to use my up key. There it goes up. I'm gonna use my down key, there it goes down. Does it keep going forever? It keeps going forever. We, we haven't done any, any tests on it. You know, we haven't made an on-screen function for this guy yet. I'm going to try my left and right keys. Nothing happens. I'm going to hit my other keys on my keyboards. So nothing's happening. So I'll say that was a good test. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Save definitions. Okay, so that's update player. All right, so you go ahead and um, uh, do a design recipe just like we did, but write yours in on page 26. Let's make sure that's the right page number. I found a, in, in these slides, I found an example where it was wrong, so that's why I'm checking. 26, okay, good. Page 26. Um, go ahead and fill in the um, design recipe, and you can go back to part of the video if you need to. And then we're going to do it here. So good. You can follow along here. Um, update player. With a number and a string. And it's going to produce a number. And there's an example. Good. So they did they did uh, some down examples too. That was something I didn't do. So you should have your down examples also. And so we see what the Y is. We see what the key is, and then what the operation is that we need to do. So now we can define update player Y key. There's our cond. We're doing our output. We're figuring out what number we're going to produce by testing up, by testing down. We're going to have an else. If it's else, then we're just going to return that. So that's exactly what I just went over in Dr. Rocket. Now you should be able to fill in yours. Pause here if you need to. All right, great. And then actually go ahead and in in um, the game.racket, go ahead and, and change the update player um, function to match yours and test it. Today you learned about piecewise functions and how they're used to move your game player. Be thinking about what else you need in your program um, to um, to have a playable game. So we learned about one one thing about moving your game player, but what else do you need? That's it for today.